so, Greg, we're going to look at the, the what this is the Flip HVR100, right? Correct. Okay, tell us about it. All right, yeah, so this is our new large field of view system. It's a bench top model, and uh, the, the main features that it has is that it has a very large field of view, about 90 millimeters on the horizontal, and that it can either be in the vertical or the horizontal orientation. Okay. Meaning uh, you can, you can right now we're seeing in the vertical, you're saying this can be laid down. Correct, okay, yeah, all right, got it. exactly. Okay. Um, uh, so show us what it does. Alrighty. So uh, let me put this part up here. And then if we look at the software, you can see this basically looks, it's a piston head. Okay. Um, and so the way that this unit works is, is that it can pick up the contrast between the light and the dark regions. So that's how it, it does its measurement algorithm. So if I go ahead and click that line there, you can see it sees that as a line. It sees that as a line, and then you know it'll auto recognize circles as well. Okay. Um, you can just click these, click around, and it's basically as simple as that. If you want to do you know some fast and dirty type of measurements, you can just put a part up and start clicking on features. It'll and pick uh, up a radius as well, I'm assuming. Yeah, exactly. So you could grab this little arc right here, okay. um, and then you can make measurements between various features. So you could take you know basically these two circles here. See them on the right. And you can see them on the, on the bottom here, okay. like that. And um, another thing you can do is, it, it typically goes to the center of features, but you can change that as well. So you can have it do the nearest points, the furthest points, and uh, it's simple to switch it between millimeters and inches as well. And what kind of accuracy are we talking about? Uh, this is about eight microns worth of accuracy. Okay. Um, and repeatability. All right. Yeah. Um, so, that's a good example of you know how simple it is to just pick up any old part and measure it. Um, another thing that's very useful is basically the part recognition software. So what I'll show you now is um, if we go ahead and start a new program here, you can turn on the auto part functionality, and if you put a part on the stage, should basically pick up that it's seeing something and measure it. Just like so. Oh wow. Okay, so you're saying that as long as so it recognizes the, par the the part shape. So as long as that that part is in the library, that when you put a part down, it just detects the shape or the features or something and correlates it to that part stored in the library and just automatically brings up the the parts program. Exactly. So based on the shape of the part alone, it can tell what it's looking at and yeah. run the program and basically measure whatever features you'd like. So this take, takes the place of, uh, typically in the past what you would have done is maybe brought up a menu of stored programs, gone through that, found the, found the part you were looking for, selected that, and th this simply takes the place of that. It's just automatic. You just drop it on there. Exactly. It's great it, for the shop floor guy. <laughs> oh yeah, so, yeah. so the shop yeah. floor guy, they don't Save actually need time, to, yeah. yeah, they don't yeah. need to know how to find all those parts of where the libraries are. They don't even need to have access to that stuff. Okay. You can literally just, you know, put a part on there and measure it. Okay. So if, uh, I'll show you another part here. Um, this one's I know so you, you turn off the light. So sometimes, when, when might you use the, the, the top light here as opposed to just the, uh, uh, the bottom one? Well, if you have um, a feature that's on the surface of the part, but it doesn't go all the way through, okay. that's, when, uh, that's when you'd want to be using your top light. In general, okay. We suggest you use the profile light. They okay. tend to be uh, a little bit more repeatable. Okay. Um, yeah. So here's another. Here's an example of a slightly more complex part okay. that we put on here, and it'll, that should also trigger the auto part recognition. And there you have it. So it doesn't even really care uh, about orientation. You just kind of plop it on there, and it's going to self-orient. Exactly. No matter it, yeah. which alignment you put on the uh, stage, it'll be okay. able to skew it and measure wow. your part regardless. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So yeah, you can put you know hundreds of parts in the library and have them all measure this way. Yeah. It's uh, very, very efficient. All right. Um, let's see. Another thing I'd like to show you is the, um, basically its ability with round parts, because these ones pretty much that I've showed you have straight, straight walls and straight edges. All right. Um, so here is an example of a, of a round part. And this is actually using a brand new module that our software guys at Metlogix just released. So this is a thread module. Um, and what this allows the program to do is to basically tell you, you know, your a bunch of information about the thread very quickly. Okay. So you use your thread tool here. And it's as simple as clicking and dragging over the thread. And then there you have it. Put it in millimeters since this is a metric thread. Wow, that's 
<laughs> and there's your measurements for you. So well, this is a uh, thread wires and a micrometer. So <laughs> exactly. So this is a uh, it's a lot faster than that. So this is an M6 by one. So you can see there's your outside diameter. There's uh, you know almost six millimeters. There's your root diameter and your pitch diameter. Wow. And then here is your um, you know there's your the, the pitch itself, which is one millimeter. Okay. Now I noticed that you're 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 changing. Uh, the, the, the height of this, I'm assuming that that's to focus on uh, parts depending how high, that, whether they're sitting right on top or in this case, what, two inches off the, exactly. off the base. Okay. So this, this system has a very large depth of field. It's okay. about a, an inch that it can measure within. Okay. Now, even outside of that depth of field, to the eye it'll look and focus. However, if you zoom in in the software, you can actually see, you know, the pixels here, okay. and then you can see your optimal measurements. You can see it moving in and out of focus a little better. So if you wanted to really fine tune it, you could just zoom in and, and just... Exactly. Yeah, so okay. depending on you know how much accuracy you require, the best way to, to get your best focus is to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, so right. that's, that's a pretty good example of a round part. And then another functionality we have is the digital comparator function. So what this does is it allows you to use an overlay similar to a comparator, um, which is still very, uh, very useful for certain shops. They, they prefer to have that overlay with the tolerance band on it. Right. And it's very simple to do so with this software. So what I'll do is, and you can see, you might be able to see it's a little bit out of focus now, but uh, we'll go ahead and move it into focus. And um, next thing I'll do, so basically in order to get your overlay to snap onto the part correctly, you need to tell it the origin of the part. Um, so that's what I'll do here by setting up a datum and a skew. So we'll skew this top line here. We'll grab this left line here. And then where those two intersect is the datum of the part. Okay. And then basically what you do is you have a DXF of the nominal, you know, generated through CAD or what have you. Sure. Um, go ahead and open that up. And it should just snap like like so. So you okay. can see there's an actual overlay here with the tolerance band on the part. Ah, okay. Now this could be set up to do uh, kind of no go, go, no go, right? Where uh, it would compare to the tolerance bands and if it's within or without, it would give you an indication of the part passed or failed. Exactly, so yeah. it'll, uh, not even just the part passing or failing, but certain features within the part. Okay. And those features can also have different tolerances based on you know your needs for manufacturing. Okay, so you don't have just one tolerance band that, that for all features, you, each feature can be set up with its own tolerance. Exactly, okay, so you can, you can tolerance the features as necessary. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's you know, a good example of this, this functionality. Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, how you make this thing horizontal. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's rather simple. Basically, you got a little piece of bodywork here that needs to be removed. And then the stage here actually just flips 90 degrees like so. And then there's some rollers on the back that it just uses to pivot on. And there's a handle here on the top. And you just, you know, go ahead and lay it over backwards. And then, uh, so for some people, they, uh, or some shops, they, they prefer to have that horizontal orientation, particularly for fixturing turn parts a lot of times. We see that a lot with our other horizontal systems, so we figured, hey, you know, if we could offer a machine that offers both functionality in vertical and horizontal, and you know, have it be price competitive with you know, a machine that does just one of those things, that we'd be in a very good place. Right, perfect. Uh, well, again, this was the, the Flip HVR100, right? Exactly, Okay, yes. perfect. Thanks for showing it to us. Hey, thank you very much for having me.